Hey right, guys, Relfy Dude here. I thought I'd give you guys a quick tutorial on some quick tips that I found while going through the manual of the A10. And the uh, some of the things that I found just fiddling around in the cockpit. Uh, a lot of these things you'll probably know, some of which you won't. But I know I keep getting some questions asked, how to do this, how to do that, while I'm playing multiplayer. And I figured, I guess some of you really do need a little bit of this tutorial. So I hope you enjoy. And uh, here we go. One cool thing I found is uh, you can actually visually see where somebody is on the map. One of your uh, flight compadres, if you will, by uh, actually hooking onto them. So what we're going to do is use the little cursor tad and slew over one of these guys. Lock him up by pressing TMS sharp. Now you can see right over here his own ID and group ID so if you never have to ask if you want to get on his group and own ID but another cool thing is now on the HUD you have a visual box representation of where they are right now in the air if we're to move around that's exactly where they are right now which is pretty neat I've actually noticed this before now a lot of times you also notice that uh, people send you information to uh, kind of like JTAG does it, a data link, or, you know, if in black shark terms. Uh, you can actually do the same. So what I did here is I found some targets. I uh, went ahead and uh, locked this guy up. Point mo, TMS up long. And then, I'm going to turn off my speed. Let's say this guy's not aware. So I'm going to go ahead and press TMS up short while hovering this cursor over him. And now you'll see 12, 17. Go ahead and hit this button. Uh, this is his own ID and this is his group ID. There you go. That's it. Now he's got the information like a regular JTAC would send it. All right, gentlemen, I know you probably already know this, but inputting coordinates into the CDU. Well, that's as easy as pie. So what we want to do is go ahead this is, of course, a straight copy of this because they're both the CDU. It's a little easier to use this keyboard, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. So the question mark, I'm going to press that, creating a new waypoint. I'm going to name it target1, and now I'm going to change that to this because otherwise it's going to be as MSN004. Now it's going to be named target1, so it's easier to recognize and north and east coordinates. If you have UTM, you would press L slash L and change this to UTM. Okay, so... Okay, here we go. And now, if the mission designer is stupid and did not uh, do this very correctly, sometimes the elevation is going to be like thousands of feet up into the air, kind of like having waypoints. So instead of having being on the ground, they're up here somewhere. Um, if that ever happens to you, you would change this EL for elevation to zero, roughly, uh, and that should fix it for you. Now, what we would do is change this from flight plan to mission. Our HUD is soy, so go ahead and scroll up, and there's our target one. And that's exactly where it is. You can look at your TAD screen and bada beam bada boom, it's number four right there. You just slave your TGP and that's it, you got it. Now, there is one other thing that people do not uh, understand is when you're dealing with UTM coordinates, uh, you have this thing here called 317 WG84. Now, because of the nature of uh, the location of what we're playing at, we do seem to have a cross between a grid. If I were to zoom this out further, you would see this kind of crossing in between different grids. It becomes a problem. Uh, so there are certain missions where they give you coordinates in UTM. You enter them in, and uh, you realize that the waypoint's 800 miles away. The reason is because instead of it being 37T, it's actually 38T. And all you do is you put 38 into the CDU, press this button right here, change that to 38T, and you should have it much closer to you. Most 
you know, eight out of ten times it'll be fine, but that two out of ten times, if uh, you do end up having something that's 800 miles away, you know that's the problem, and now you know how to fix it. Another great thing that I've found is called TAF, T-A-A-F, which is found on your TGP. Essentially, TAF will trigger a red warning tape on both MFCDs and the HUD, telling you to check your attitude if you are below the set TAF altitude and you are banking beyond uh, the limits of TAF, which is uh, something like 75 degrees, I believe. Uh, and this is a great thing to use if you're going to do some high altitude bombing and you don't want to mask your TGP over a target. And the way we set them up is you go to the control page and TAAF right up here. Now originally it's set to zero. So you can set it up. So I'm at Angel's 20 right now. So I'm going to do a set of 20. And that adds 20,000 feet, right? Destroyed. So now I'm going to go below the altitude set here. Alright. And now I'm going to roll. And there we go. We got a check attitude warning. I think it shows up on the one. Yeah, there you go. On the HUD, it also shows a warning sign right there. It's pretty nifty, but uh, not necessary. Now, let's say we have a uh, situation where we need to do some low altitude flying. And you're getting constantly annoyed by Bitch Betty going off and telling you pull up. So this. Pull up. Pull up. And you want to change that. Well, that's as easy as pie. So what we're going to do is actually change the value that's set at right here. On the scratch pad, we have a altitude alert. Hit that, and you're set to 500. So set it to, I don't know, 10. Whoopsie. There you go. That's it. Since the altitude displayed right now is above sea level, what we want to do is uh, have a little thing where uh, you can see what your AGL is, which is above ground level. Uh, one way to do it is to check your uh, targeting pod, but it's not always very accurate. Right now it's telling us we're doing 460. Right down here, IFFCC, flip that to test. And we're gonna go use the rocker key, go down to display modes, press enter, and we're gonna go radar altitude tape. Change that to yes. IFCC is back on. And now what you'll see is on the right side we have a new measuring tape. And this is accurate up to 1500 feet. So, let's give that a whirl. You can see as we're decreasing in altitude, the bar gets lower. Now another cool thing I found in the IFFCC is if we bring it back to test, we can actually, you know, I can't see the UFC. I'm going to turn really quick here. And bring this puppy on altitude hold. Alright, we're going to bring this down to display modes again. Press enter. And tapes, flip that to yes. Go ahead and get out of this. Look at that. We got nice little tapes on this side. Kind of reminds you of that F-15, right? Which is pretty nifty, I must say. Okay, now imagine, if you will, that you just started up your airplane and you change your payload. Now you see CBU-97s and Mavericks are loaded, but what we actually have are bombs on the side. So we need to change this back to uh, the real payload loadout. And one way is to go to the inventory is do it, but uh, that's a big pain in the ass. So what we're actually going to do is use the uh, message here to reload the entire thing. We're going to press and hold message, go load, now load selected, we're going to load message. When we do that, the message is going to turn into load. I'm going to press load, 
and load all. Now you'll see the asterisks disappear. When they reappear, everything is reloaded. Okay, now that they're all reloaded, we're going to check the dismiss. And there we have it. Okay, now imagine, if you will, that you are in a flight group with a bunch of people and you need to uh, change your laser codes. So, in order to do that, it's actually simple but slightly tedious if you have a lot of bombs. Uh, GBU-12s, per se. As you can see right now, the laser codes by default is 1688. So, we need to change that to, let's say, 1655. Go into our inventory page, select GBU-12. And we have to select GBU 12. And now you see laser code 1688. So we're going to go ahead and go 1655. Chose that. Click this, and there you go, 1655. Now, instead of pressing load and then doing the same thing over for this th next one over, we're going to load symmetry. You do that, and it automatically copies what you did there to the opposite station. But we're not done yet. Now you would obviously change these as well. Now you need to go to your TGP, right? Make sure it's on. Go to your control setting. You'll see L and LSS. Make sure you change these to 1655. 1655. That's it. And now you can laze away and not have to worry about other people hitting your uh, your lasers and vice versa. Cool, huh?